All right, so this is Tiblio, and it's an amazing online service that helps you find the best trading opportunities. They have multiple different screeners for credit spreads, option sweeps to follow large trades and big money moves, and a lot more for your different trading strategies. There's a trading board so you can log all your trades as soon as you enter. You're gonna get real-time alerts sent straight to your phone. But the best feature is the community Discord group where you can exchange trading ideas and get guidance from the Tiblio team. So you can sign up for $34.95 a month. That's less than a tank of gas, but make sure that you sign up with my link and get your first month for 20% off. All right, so make sure you check out Tiblio. If you haven't tried out Webull, make sure you use my link below for 12 free stocks when you join. Webull's added so many new features like the volume profile indicator, paper trading with options, and educational tools to help you trade more profitably. So make sure that you sign up to trade with Webull today. People have asked me, why did I make a deck of candlestick review cards instead of writing a book? Well, take a look at these. Okay, these are some of the books that have influenced my thinking about these cards. And this doesn't even include audio and eBooks. Okay, so there's a lot of good information and knowledge in these books and guess where it all ended up? Right here in these cards. It took me years to read and interpret these books. It took me months to design these cards, but it'll only take you five or six minutes to pick up one of these cards and soak up the knowledge. So get your Black Girl Stocks candlestick review cards and learn how to make money from candlestick charts today. Foxtel Digital coming to you again with Black Girl Stocks. And this is our Sunday live chat where we're just gonna come and talk about a few different stocks and options that we're looking into next week, okay? Okay. Okay, so I know I'm a little bit rusty. It's been a minute since we were actually on live and I don't know if I put this on YouTube. I know I said it on my Instagram and in the Discord, uh, but I had surgery earlier this month, so I'm kind of in in uh, recovery mode, but I'm feeling strong, feeling well. And we have a lot of stuff going on next week, okay? So let's go ahead and get into some things. I hope you guys are ready. What's going on, Terry? Hey, sis, lovely 226, good evening. What area code is 226? What's going on, Jay Picks? Hey, Fox. All right, so let's go ahead and move it over here. So you already know how we're going to start tonight off. Usually we start with um, our favorite ETFs. It's usually gonna be SPY and QQQ and just kind of see what's going on for next week, okay? So let's go ahead and start with actually the earnings. So we have a lot of earnings next week. Okay, so we have, um, see too much for Monday SoFi you know we have SoFi Uber AMD Ford Pfizer um, mm, CVS okay we have Etsy everybody loves Etsy Wingstock y'all love Wingstock Phillips 66 um, Esther Lauderdale oh, okay uh, WWE we have Shell Apple Shopify Coinbase DraftKings Lyft Moderna, Royal Caribbean, and then everybody's favorite AMC, uh, Warner Brothers, Cigna. So there's a lot of stuff going on next week. Okay, definitely for earnings. Um, thank you, Earnings Whispers, for that. Now let's move over to the Wall Street Breakfast from Seeking Alpha, so shouts out to them. All right, so check this out. This is gonna be interesting. So next week, the U.S. economy is going to be in the spotlight with the Federal Reserve's Policy Making Committee meeting next uh, May 2nd and 3rd. Okay, so that's Tuesday and Wednesday. And we're also going to get updates on construction spending, factory orders, jobless claim. Oh, hold on. No, not that one. Jobless claims. And the headliner at the end of the week is going to be the April's jobs reports. Okay. 
So we have earnings, we have Fed meetings, we have jobless claims, and what, let me see, let me see, let me see. Last week, okay, uh, this was on April 28th, I put this in the Discord, we had our PC, PCE data that came out, okay, so um, this is gonna be key a key inflation measure, and it increased by 4.6%. So that's another thing to look into. Um, well, let's see here. So this is just a specifics on the Fed meeting. So the Federal Open Market Committee is expected to raise interest rates by 25 basis points next week, okay? Now the biggest focus is gonna be from economists and that's gonna be on the statements and if the language referring to these two things. Now pay attention to this. Some additional policy firming and the extent of future increase in the target range. I didn't know what that meant, so I did a little bit of research. Uh, and so let's just kind of get a breakdown of what these things mean if you guys are interested in watching the actual Federal Reserve meeting. Okay, so some additional policy firming. So policy firming is an economic term used by the central banks to refer to the process of raising interest rates or taking other actions to tighten monetary policy. Okay, so that's basically, you know, policy firming. Are they gonna do any changes? So some additional policy firming suggests that the central bank is considering taking further steps to tighten monetary policy, like make raising interest rates. We already knew that. Now, the extent of future increase in the target range. So in determining the extent of future increases in the target range refers to the magnitude or scale of future increases in the Federal Reserve's tar target range for the federal funds rate. So the statement suggests that the Federal Reserve will carefully consider the cumulative tightening of monetary policy, the lags with uh, the monetary policy affects economic activity and inflation and economic and financial developments. Girl, I don't know what that means, okay? <laughs> I really don't. But those are some of the things that we're going to look for next week. And I'm just going to be honest with you with everything that's going on. If you're not into credit spreads, next week might be a good week to do some spreads. Okay. Uh, if you don't know about spreads, just go ahead and search for it in my video topics after you get off this live and look into doing some credit spreads if you're interested in doing that. So that was pretty much what's going on next week. Oh. Uh, oh no, Miss Mac is in here. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> okay, let me see. What's going on, Incognito321? Uh, Welcome back. Thank you so much. I'm recovering very well. Thank you, uh, Daryl. What's up, Devante? Uh, Adolphus904, all love, black girl against. Thank you. What's going on, Lena? Okay, now let's go ahead and let's start. Oh, first of all, so I'm going to talk about SPY QQQ, and I have a couple of stocks that I want to talk about. Just look at those. But if you guys have any stocks that you want to look into for next week, just leave it in the comment section. Hey, Karen, shalom. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so just leave it in the comment section below and we're gonna talk about it. All right, so looking at SPY, so we're always usually gonna start on the daily chart. I did not mean for that to rhyme, but kind of you know, using a few different things, uh, I like to use the volume profile indicator over here. And actually, before we really get into it, I just wanna say shouts out to Weeble because they have really been you know, on their game. Um, they've added a few new things that I know I've been asking for. I sent them a message in January Oops. Okay, so the two new, well, they added actually four. Um, no, three. Dang, where did I get all that? So they added the fixed range volume profile, and that's just gonna be a little bit different than what we have right now. So you see with this one, it moves, you know, when you zoom in and out. I know for some people that can be confusing. So now they've added the fixed range volume profile, so you can just kinda, you know, drag that there, boom. And it's just going to, I mean, it's pretty similar to what we're looking at here, but it's just going to be fixed. Um, so if you want to look at a specific area, you don't have to worry about, 
the moving with that one. So that is something that they added. And the other thing is the long and short position uh, ratio. So let's say if, okay, let's say if, Let's say if I was anticipating this breakout to move up to um, this 425. So I, I may have my, wait, oops. Dang it, hold on, y'all. Um, that's not what I want. Okay, well, I need to, I need to do some, some practicing on this because this isn't, this isn't what I'm looking for, but uh, I know that a lot of other platforms, specifically Trading View, Trader Trading View, they have that. But I mean, you can only have like three indicators on the thing before you have to start paying. That is too much. So Webull is very quickly becoming the best trading platform out there. So if you're not using Webull, um, get into that. Now, you can kind of see we have a little breakout potential here we have some resistance on spy literally where we are at 415 um, but we are kind of at that that value area high here and we have our plc down here actually and this is another thing so our plc is at 395 so where we are with the rsi as high as it is um, it wouldn't be too much to anticipate a potential return to either this four, maybe I would say the, the 50 period moving average on the daily, it may be 401, uh, more extreme returning to the point of control at that 395. I mean, yeah, we had a lot of bullish movement last week. So I really, I just wanna see what happens. You know, we have a lot of economic data next week. I would just kind of wanna wait or do some credit spreads. But if I was gonna have, ooh, where's my four? If I was gonna look for a bearish entry next week. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, if you like to trade on the hourly chart, cause look at that. Mm -mm. I would probably have my entry, excuse me, maybe at 415, excuse me. And then by that point, we would have had a crossover with, the, with our EMA lines here. These are my two um, five and 10 period EMA line on the hourly chart. So I would, I would definitely want to see a bearish crossover with that. So we'll just kind of see what happens uh, next week. Mm. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about SPY. Do you think that it's going to continue breaking out of this resistance that we have right here around 415 and continue moving upwards? Or do you think we're going to have a rebound back to maybe 411? Even more extreme really would be that 404 on the hourly chart. So what do you guys think? It's on the mobile too. Oh no, uh, incognito, it's on mobile. Definitely. Oh God, what is that? Mm. Hold on. Uh, why is it? Oh, I took mine off when I was recording that video. Hold on. Okay, it's kind of hard to see. It's on it's on the um, left over here. But yeah, it's on there. Rebound might be mm. consolidation. Okay, thank you, Neil. All right, so oh, okay, let's look at QQ. QQQ is probably going to be similar. And make sure you guys click the, oh wow, this looks almost the same. Mm, that is interesting. Make sure you guys click that thumbs up button for me too. How many likes do we have on here? I know you lying. We have 74 people in here and not even 20 likes. Stop playing with. We need to make that, we need to even up that number. Okay, make sure you guys click that thumbs up button for me. Devante says, I think we'll see a pullback after this week. Huey says, okay, we'll look at Amazon after QQQ. Rose says, I literally cannot tell. It feels bearish to me, but I'll definitely be looking at the extended data. Adolphus says, it's going up. <laughs> okay, so you think Monday is going to be bullish. Mm. It's going up until the Fed announcement. After that, it's going back down. I can see that. 
SPY is a short move to the downside before making all time highs. Mm. Thank you so much. Okay, so, okay, okay. What did you say? Amazon. Okay, let's look at QQQ. Oh, we're already on QQQs. Okay, pretty much the same thing. It's pretty similar. You see, still using that volume profile where actually we surpassed that value area high, which was around 320. We're at 322, so I can definitely see a little rebound. Look at that RSI. It's really just kind of relaxing there, just kind of consolidating around uh, 66. Sharp turn with our uh, DMI plus, DI plus. So yeah, I'm interested to see what happens next week. I'm gonna be bearish. I was bearish most of last week with the positions that I had, and it did very well up until Thursday and Friday. So yeah, that was a mess, but that's okay. So we'll see what happens with that. All right, let's look at, oh, I didn't change the thing. Y'all didn't tell me. I'll change it on the playback. Okay, that was QQQ. Now let's look at Amazon and then we'll look at AMD, okay? And this was a mess. So my mom, she'll send me text messages almost weekly and she'll say, you know, can you look at my favorite stock? Tell me what you think. She was so excited when Amazon went up to 123. So they had their earnings and it was decent, but they said something about their AWS isn't doing so well. I ordered something from Amazon almost every day, separate orders this week. It was a mess. So I don't know what's going on with that. They need to get that. They need to get that. But um, all right, so let's look at Amazon on the daily chart. Let's see. Mm. Now this, mm. hold on. So this is something very interesting. This is just looking on the daily chart. We've been in a pretty long-term downtrend and this started, this has been pretty much since 2021. And we've definitely been using that 200 and, you know, that 50 period moving average. We've kind of been using that as some resistance. Now we are at, it feels like every time we go live, we're always at that point. This position where we are right now, who asked for this? Who said this? I don't know who did, who said Amazon? Oh, Huey, Huey did this. Let me see if I can pin this. Huey, this is kind of a do or, a do or die moment. We literally just crossed above that 200 period moving at, oop. <laughs> oh no. Thank you, Lena, for your super chat. Wow. Oh, wow. And you have an actual option contract. Okay. So we're going to move AMD down and we're going to look at Apple next. App, actually, they have their earnings next week too. Lena, be careful, girl. I don't know. Hold on. Because you know we have earnings next week. What is it on Thursday? I mean, I, you may play around, uh, Lena, but I've gotten burned with those earnings girls. So just, I don't know, but they have their earnings after market close. So it's probably going to do a lot of mess throughout the week. <sighs> Lena, I don't know. All right, let me see. So, oh, let me finish Amazon real quick though. All right. So like I said, this is a do or die point. Let's uh, come back into our four, four. Mm, I'm not sure about this. Hmm. That looks a little bearish to me, but even on this, we're right here on that 50 period moving average on the four hour chart, which has actually been using as support. So this is going to be very crucial. And I'm I, if I was going to do something with Amazon, I would tread, tread lightly with that. Now on the one hour chart, our, po our point of control, that PLC, it's around $99. A lot of times we do see um, a return to that PLC. So if I was going to be bearish, I would really just kind of want to want, I would want to wait for it to cross um, below the support area. We're already here at that 104. I would really say probably 102. 102 if I was going to be bearish and I could see, if I am bearish, I could see a return to that 99 
uh, or worst case, it would be that 92, golly. But on the upside, if I'm bullish, I need to see a cross above, probably around this one. I know this is this is a little bit fur further out, but I'll probably say 107, uh, even more extreme would be 110. Now, if I saw a cross above that, bullish to me, okay? Um, oh, yes. I mean, and if we can see it come back to that 145, that would be beautiful, but that's just on the bullish side, okay? So, I mean, it's a hit or miss. What did we say? We said 107 on the upside, um, and probably that 102 for bears. So just wait for those, set your limits. So, I mean, I, I do this every morning. Let me see, create your alert. So boom above that and then price below 102 and leave it alone. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for that, Huey. Now let's do Apple for Lena. Can we unpin that? Let's see what Apple's talking about. Mm. Hold on, let me zoom out, hold on. Mm. Dang, Lena, you said this? And that's why I see you said those calls too. Lena, I don't know, girl, this looks cute. So this is looking on the daily chart. What I really like, the RSI, now hold on, let's just, let's just see. I mean, long term, it's it's been in a downtrend. And once again, we've been using that 50 period and that 200 uh, as a pretty good resistance point. But where we are, uh, okay, I like, I kind of like this. For where we are, it kind of reached a support that we had. This is back November of 2020. And so this is the, um, the value area low, and that's around 34. This is Apple. Girl, this isn't Apple. Oh no, Lena, I'm not sure about this queen. Okay, so this looks, I knew something was up there. I'm like, I know that with that. So this is looking pretty similar to what we were looking at, at um, on SPY and QQQ. Now this is on the daily chart and, mm, I mean, Apple has been in a pretty good uptrend for a while. I would have considered that, that drop probably in around the summertime of last year, it kind of starts to, you know, looks like it's moving below uh, this 50 and this 200 period moving average. That's this white and the yellow line here on my daily chart. And here we're at our value area high, that's around 166. Um, so we actually surpassed that and we closed at 169. So, <sighs> mm. this is interesting. RSI is kind of looking a little weak to me MACD is looking a little weak. And next week, honestly, I, I really want to be bearish next week. Just based off these patterns, and I like patterns. Plus we had that little, it was a small gap up. It wasn't too much though, it's not too much. Yeah, for me, I'm probably going to be bearish on Apple next week too. But if I was going to be bullish, Lena, mm, dang, that's 170. I mean, this is just, this is pure continuation. I don't know, I just, if I was gonna be bullish, I would need to see it move past 170, but I really am not bullish on this. I'm, I feel like I'm more so bearish on Apple. And if I was going to enter a bearish position, mm, honestly, I probably have my entry 167, 168. And I can see a bearish move, probably back to that 159. We'll see. Our side still, it looks a little high on the four hour chart. Um, so yeah, I don't know, Lena. I really wanna see though. Six percent to trade. Hey, oh, okay. Hey, Tanya. Hey, Foxtel, can you look at BKR call three weeks out? Okay, we can look at BKR. Hold on, where's my pen? Okay, so that's Apple. Next is AMD. Then we can do 
BKR. I kind of want to look at DraftKings, um, Shopify, and uh, I said QCOM, didn't I? I don't know. So if you guys have one, <laughs> Lena said, I'm not going to. You know what, Lena? I'm not even going to say that. That's what I said. You have Weeble. Do, do a spread. Do a credit spread because remember, they have that earnings report next week. And if you guys are into earnings, I don't even have it up. And I, if they keep. See, it keeps kicking me out every time. Okay, hold on, let me see. So what I like to use for my earnings plays is Tilio. And so they'll give you the earnings calendar, uh, but really what I like to do, hold on, hold on. They have credit spreads. And so let's type in Apple. Okay, so yeah. Um, the earnings is on, oh God, what's the date? Sometime next week. So I would want to get an earnings that's, you know, some somewhere close. Uh, so probably this five, five or 16, something like that. So I would want to get probably, I'm, actually, I'm probably going to do a credit spread and this is probably where I'm going to get it from. Um, so yeah, the thing that you want to look for, oh no, they don't have it on here. Hold on. The thing that you want to look for is the market maker move. Here it is. Or the implied move. So it's around seven. So Apple, does somebody say that Apple's supposed to move like $7, $6? I thought I saw somebody say that. But yeah, this is the, the information that I go off of. And so that's where I'll set my limit. So I'll probably, if I do do a credit spread or an iron condor next week on Apple for earnings, um, I would have my my limits around seven or eight dollars out. So that's how you do that. Okay, now the next one that we're gonna look at, like I said, is AMD. So let's check out AMD. Oh, okay, hey Sophie, Sophie said MU. So we'll see, we'll see. Thursday after hours for Apple, yeah, okay. So let's see what AMD is talking about. Oh, yes. Hold on. Oh, yes. Oh, God, hold on. Oh, no. Okay, so this is, first of all, I haven't even really been messing with AMD too much because last week I was doing a lot of, I had some Oxy, I had some XLE. Um, I had some other stuff. This is off of a fib that I drew a minute ago, but this is really interesting. So you can see, and this is interesting as well. This looks opposite from what we're looking at Apple and SP1 and all this other stuff. So, you know, that's important. Now let's zoom in just a little bit. This has uh, been on a short term up trend. Okay. We can see a nice little trend here with some resistance points and it's really been hitting these fib levels to the T. I mean, I'm telling you, a lot of people have to be using this. I mean, this is a mess. Look at this resistance right here. Fell right on a fib line. This was a right on a fib line. <laughs> anyway, so you can kind of see here, we um, just had a little re a, a re rebound, a retrace. <laughs> we had a retrace off of this 61% around $84. Okay, now, if I'm gonna do something cute, and I'm gonna anticipate this. Who asked for this? Who asked for this? Is this Devante? I don't even know, but this is amazing. I, first of all, I am bullish on AMD. I really wanna see what happens because look at this. The MACD is looking very cute. It looks like it's trying to do something bullish to me. RSI looks really, okay, now this is something I tried different just a couple of days ago. Um, just kind of trying two different, cause I love the crossovers. If you guys follow me on Instagram, I just put up a video. I think it was t yesterday about my favorite strategy is crossovers. And it is, you, I look at crossovers on the MACD. I look at crossovers on the EMA. Now you can use RSI. Um, so, I mean, we just had a small crossover on my, my closer EMA lines here, the five and 10, those are these, these, the smaller ones and these larger ones out here. I know it seems like a lot of lines, but once you like, it's, it's not, it's really not that much. Um, 
So yeah, I can see a move up to this this fib line here, uh, the 92%, no, not 92, it's 78% and the, it would be like $92. And I mean, if it continues, you know, we can see across above that 102. So I'm bullish on AMD. And as far as the entry price and you know, what I would like to see, um, mm, that's not that bad honestly I would want to see it cross above this 90 it's really like 91 but we'll I mean we'll see for me it's probably gonna be 90 91 if you're a little more risky I mean you could just say 90 but yeah so I mean our first I mean a better one will be 92 and then my target is honestly gonna be that 102 plus so we'll see what happens with AMD yeah oh wait no okay yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> thank you sophie <laughs> i see a fallen wedge forming on amd let me see fallen wedge on what time frame hmm. oh i do see it okay I mean, we'll see. This is a do or die moment then. If you're talking about on the daily chart, I can kind of see a little something. I can see, you know, boom, boom, a possible boom. I can see it, but we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens. So, I mean, if I was going to be bearish then, just playing devil's advocate, and that's, uh, that's a little bit further off. If I was going to be bearish, I really want to say, I would, I mean, you can go with the super trend indicator. I would probably say 86, but let me zoom in. Yeah, that's what I said. 86. There you go. So, I mean, if I'm going to be bearish, I'll have it at 86. Let me go ahead and put my little, I'm going to put my little alerts in. I forgot what I said for the bullish. Okay. 91. Mm-hmm. Just in case if I want to trade it next week too. Okay. Whew. So that's AMD. All right. Uh, let's look at what's the next one. BKR, BKR for, <laughs> for Tanya. We'll look at BKR instead. Okay. Instead of doing QCOM, we'll do MU and then DraftKings, Shopify, and that'll be it for tonight. How long have we been on? It's 30 minutes, girl, I gotta go. I'm about to go to dinner with my mom. Um, so hold on, let's see, let's see. And make sure you guys click that thumbs up button for me too, okay? Cause I see 103, I don't mean for this to rhyme every time. But we need to make the, click the like button. Let me put it in the chat. Oh, thank you, Tanya. I'm not yelling. Actually, I don't care. It looks like I'm yelling, but I'm not. Okay, so this is BKR, uh, Baker Hughes. What is this? Hold on, let me see. Baker Hughes, oh, oil and gas, yes. And then the top sectors last week was uh, financials, energy, and real estate. So I don't know about oil and gas. Actually, it was kind of down because I know I had some puts on. Um, mm. Oh, Oxy. Oh, yeah, they weren't doing so hot. Girl, I don't know, Tanya. Let's look and see. This is really interesting. This is on the four-hour chart. So this is BKR. Honestly, though, it's been, you know, somewhat bullish. It's kind of been using our 200 period moving average on the daily chart. This this yellow line right here. It's been using that as some support. It kind of started to play around. This is around summertime of 2022 last year. So that's when we kind of first started to have the little bearish dip. Now it's kind of playing around though. It's not doing too much. So time to stand, not yet. 
this is, I don't know, this is a very interesting time. So honestly, this is playing around the value area. They say that value area is whenever we're in between that 50 and that 200 period moving average, which it looks like we are. Let me get these dots off of here. Take that off. <clears throat> What did you say? You said you have June 16th, $30 call, Tanya. Mm. I mean, it looks, okay. This is interesting. So we, okay. Well, just looking at the volume profile, so where we are right here on the daily chart, we have our POC, that's the highest volume traded around this area, it was around $28.42. And we kind of see what happened last year around November and December. We kind of had some consolidation around that area and then we had bullish breakout, honey. So let's just kind of see what it does around that area. Um, I don't know if it's con gonna continue to con consolidate there, but hopefully we can use that 30, excuse me, that, um, that 28 as a support and potentially, you know, have a bullish, mm, I don't know, that MACD is looking kind of weak though. Uh, I don't know. Mm. I'm just gonna have to play devil's advocate and just have some limits set up. So, I mean, I think you already know what I'm going to say. If I'm going to be bearish on this, and if I was bearish, I could see it, you know, moving back to probably that 26 and below. But if I'm going to be bearish, I'm going to have my bearish entry around that 28. It's around 28.50. If I see it cross below that, then I'm going to be bearish because, I mean, on the daily, the MACD is already kind of looking a little strange to me. Uh, and, you know, it's moved. I mean, it's kind of above the center line, but I, I don't know. I just want to see. So that's what my bearish entry would be. And then the target would probably be around 26. The worst would be 24 to 20. But on the positive side, if I'm, and then we're gonna look at your actual option contract, contract as well. Mm. I feel like a really good, and you can go, basically it's going with that, that super trend. That's this red line right here. And basically that means when we cross above that red, that's when we've moved into a bullish trend. Well, yeah, bu yeah, bullish, bullish waters. So that will probably be around 27. No, that's not right. Oh, no, no, no. 30. Around $30. So uh, 30 across above 30, really maybe $30 and 50 cents. That would be very bullish for me. And I, uh, let's look at your contract. Okay, you said the four hour. I have 91 affinity on my bill. Okay, let me see. Oh, we already did, uh, Yash, we already did Apple. I'm, uh, I'm gonna have the playbacks on here so you'll be able to just click the, um, the symbol and see the full analysis. He said $30 call. I like to see both. Oh, this is cheap too, girl, I like this. Oh, what's the Delta? Four, okay, I like this. That's nice. So, um, I don't, where's, okay, the volume is, that's zero, I don't like that. But the open interest is cute. Honestly, if I was gonna do one, I wouldn't mind spending just a little bit extra and getting that $29 call. It has a higher open interest to me and a higher Delta. It's not too much more. Um, mm. Yeah, so that's that for BKR. Okay. Next, let's do, let's do DraftKings, uh, Micron, Starbucks, and Shopify. Let's see if we can fit that in. So, Sophia said, I'm not liking BKR. And I don't know. Yeah, Neil says, 
This this thing is in my way. Hold on. Neil says gas is down and it needs to go up. Oil had a dip in his back. Okay. Oh, hey, Marco from Italy. Please help me. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, we don't want to hear none of that. Can I start? Oh, okay. Martin, just a suggestion. Can you start to add some background music, something really low to drown out the static of humming? You guys can still see the st hear the static? Oh, no. Let me see. Let me see, let me play some of my beats on here. Uh, I don't like what they've done with this, uh, this thing on here. It's a little confusing. Dun, 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 dun. Let's listen to some of my stuff. I don't know why I named that. That is not a good title. Hold on, you guys. Okay, this was my first album, Welcome to the Grammy. So let's uh, let's play some of those. Okay, so let's look at uh, DraftKings. Oops. That's too loud. Let me turn it down just a little bit. Okay, so looking at Draft, wow, this is DraftKings? What is going on? That's on the daily chart? This is nice. Okay, so, wow, this is nice for DraftKings. I mean, it can barely fit it in the, in the chart. So long-term DraftKings has been in a, in a pretty long-term downtrend. And I remember making a video when we used to do the top three option plays, I remember um, saying that it was probably going to have a long-term downtrend while it's still waiting for a lot of different states to allow legal betting. And I know in Dallas, you know, there's been several of those little, I guess they have some little illegal game show places where people will go and gamble and stuff like that. They've been raiding them. So in some places like Texas, it's not legal. We can't have casinos here. Um, but you know, let me see some news. Janet Jackson gets concert date moved. <laughs> That's not funny. Um, I'm sorry. And then, yeah, my mom did tell me, she said, actually, let's look at Roku too. My mom mentioned Roku and Kathy Wood buying it up and she sold Shop uh, Shopify. That's not going to be cute for them. All right. So yeah, for DraftKings, honestly, I'm bullish right now. It's been in a, in a short term bullish uptrend since about uh, summer of last year, you can see we've had some resistance and okay, look, we've had some resistance around this $20, 21, literally where we are. And we, ha we've had a golden cross. Okay. So that's a cross of our 50 and our 200 period moving average, that yellow and that white line it's looking very bullish for DraftKings. Now, if I was going to have a bullish entry, I mean, you can, you already know it's kind of right there. I mean, um, yeah, my entry is probably going to be around that 22, probably 22, 22, 30 to 50. Um, and just kind of see what happens. I would kind of like for it to have a little bit of a, of a relief, a leaf pullback, but overall DraftKings looks pretty bullish since, since last year. So yeah, I can kind of see a pullback for in here. So if I'm going to be bullish, my bullish entry is probably going to be around that 22. Uh, and then bearish would be. Like 20, $20 and 50 cents. 
for DraftKings. Okay. Now let's look at M. Mm, Okay, the Common Garden did say Starbucks. I'm too focused on what you're saying about the charts. Thank you, Sophia. I need to try and get that static situation fixed. I don't know what that is. Cannabis, oh my. I haven't been keeping up with the legal uh, cannabis, but I do know they just passed a bill someday last week in Texas where if you have like an ounce or something like that, or, mm, it's just a level three misdemeanor. This song isn't it. The music thing is distracting to me. I'll, I'll have to make like an actual playlist because I don't know what's playing right now. Okay, so yeah. Uh, what the, oh Lord. Okay, we said MU, so let's look at MU. But yeah, I don't know about the, the marijuana stocks. I really haven't been keeping up with that, so I, I don't have much of an opinion. But I know it's becoming more legal everywhere. So this is interesting. Micron, I don't know. It's looking like it may be trying to form a little pullback here. Uh, just kind of looking at, at that MACD, it, I mean, it's looking like it has, it could do some relief. So I would like to see a bearish crossover with that. Same thing with the RSI, it's up to around 62. So we could see a pullback and even with the price using the volume profile indicator, we're here at the value area high, that's around 63. So that a lot of times, um, look, if you haven't seen the volume profile video, that's literally the last video I posted. A lot of times this value area high is looked at as a resistance and you can see we've already, you know, reached this position several times, child. We did it back in February, a couple of times in February. We did it again, uh, late March, beginning of April. Okay. And we're here again and our POC is around $60. So honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing a bearish pull back down to at least 60 and you know even more severe would be 58 so i'm i'm kind of bearish on my what is this micron micron tech but i would really like to see those indicators i really would like to see a bearish crossover with the macd lines um was that i wasn't that wasn't the daily chart was it oh oops <laughs> is that the <laughs> oh okay um, I started on the on the four hour chart, so that kind of messed up my analysis there. Well, moving back, to, okay. Mm. I mean, even looking even looking at it on the daily chart, I, I, I like I said, I can still see some resistance points here. Um, I can still see it having a pullback though. But yeah, so we'll see. We'll see with my crime. Mm. It's slowly moving up though. It did cross above our 50 and our 200 period moving average. So, I mean, I, once again, I could see a pullback, but I mean, like I said, it's trying to move its way back up. So bullish entry for me, if I was going to be bullish, it would be around 65. Okay. Coinbase, they do, uh, we haven't looked at Coinbase, but they, were they on the earnings list next week? Yeah, Coinbase does have an earnings report <clears throat> scheduled after hours on Thursday, so. I don't remember if they said they confiscated. I just know that you get a ticket. They pro I mean, they probably do confiscate it. That would be unfortunate. Okay, so let's look at Starbucks, Roku. We've been on here for like an, almost an hour. So let's wrap it up, you guys. So let's look at, look, okay, I'll try and speed it up a little bit. Let's look at Roku, 
Coinbase and Shopify. If we can, we can we can squeeze in Alibaba and then we're gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna have to turn this music off, girl. I can't. Okay. So let's look at Roku real quick. After Miss Kathy Woods swept the market. Oh girl, I remember I looked at it too. I was like, Kathy, I don't know, Queen. I don't know. It looks very similar to DraftKings. Honestly, it's been in a pretty long-term downtrend, but you see, we've been here before. <laughs> Looking at, uh, well, no, not, not exactly, but you can see we consolidated around the area for a while. I mean, it had this move. I don't know what the heck was going on. Uh, oh, COVID. Well, I mean, we saw that spike, so I don't know if we'll see a spike like that again, but I mean, it's definitely consolidating right here and uh, it's a little tight, but we may have a little uh, bullish golden cross here with our 50 and our 200 period moving averages. So let's see. Mm. Well, I mean, it's a little bit further. It's a little bit further off, but Honestly, the best entry for me would probably be around 58 to 60. So just seeing it cross above those, actually, I'm, I'm going to probably put, I'm going to put a little, I'm going to put a, um, an alert here. And for this one, I think I may actually buy shares for this. I'm just going to see. Because, uh, you know, on the bullish side, I could see it moving back up to that 65. Mm. I don't know, but I, I actually, I can still, I can still see it kind of moving back to that 52. So if I was going to be bearish, my bearish entry would probably be around 54 to 53. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. I would like to know what, what catalyst made Kathy buy that. I'm sure she knows something that we don't, but on the upside, definitely can see it move back up to that 66. The downside, I can see it move back, you know, to that 50 on the four hours. So we'll see with Roku. Okay. I think that was a little bit faster. Um, so we did Roku. Let's look at Coinbase. Let's, we'll move Alibaba up. So we'll do Coinbase. Alibaba and then Shopify and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. And make sure you guys click that thumbs up as well. So let's look at Coinbase. Ooh. Mm. Oh yeah. That's what all that, uh, that, um, crypto mess. Mm -mm. They have a lot of financial stuff going on. I'm bearish on this because even just kind of looking at it, it's, it's kind of been trading in a range. Now this is a cute range trade. I like this. Um, it's kind of been trading in between 79 and 40 since last year. We just had a consolidation bearish break below the POC at 65. Wow, that was a while ago. So yeah, we're at 53. Honestly, I can see Coinbase coming back down to this 40. But we'll we'll just kind of mm, yeah, it's looking very bearish to me. So I could oh, excuse me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, definitely consolidated for a while and had a bearish breakout. Mm -mm. I can see it coming back down to that 40. Even worse would be 30. <clears throat> Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about Coinbase. Oh, uh, we already, um, Night, NyQuil. Oh my goodness. NyQuil. Uh, we talked about AMD just we're overall, I'm bullish on AMD. Just, uh, wait for the playback. I'll have everything in the description and you can just click on the ticker symbol and um, check it out. Just wait like maybe 15 minutes after the live. Mm. S child say, I, <laughs> I don't know why I read that. 
like that. S Child says, I see 58 too. Hi, I'm new to your channel. What's going on? Welcome to the channel. Yes. I want to die at 69. Marco, you're doing too much. I don't know, Marco. You've been saying a lot of strange things. Um, let's not. Come on now. Okay, let's move to... Did I... Let's see. <laughs> Let me look at Alibaba and see what they're talking about. Mm, that looks very similar. I thought they were they were raving on and on about how Ali, Alibaba was about to pop off and all this mess. We'll see. So this is interesting. Again, this has kind of been trading in between our value area high and the low that's around 127 and 62 that's a big difference now we're right at the poc around 90 dollars a little bit below we're at 84. Hmm. well that makes it easier for me if i'm going to be bullish i would wait for it to cross above the poc so that's going to be 90 dollars. so if we saw a cross above 90 this is a little bit more long term. I would be bullish. And my targets would be 102 <laughs> and 120. And then also 127, if you just like to hold on to your swing trades and just kind of jump in and out, take your profits, jump in, let it pull back. But I like to follow the long term trends. Now, as far as bearish, if I would be bearish, I could see it moving back probably to this 80 um, to 67. Bearish for me, I would probably want to see it move below 82 for bearish entry. So it'd be, it would be around 82. So I will put that on my chart for Alibaba. Are you going to dinner? I no, I promise you once uh, I might actually make some coffee and we did. We, we didn't look at Starbucks either. I want to talk about Starbucks too. Because I remember I used to go into Starbucks almost every day and pay that $5 for that little Frappuccino. It wasn't even that much. I didn't feel anything off of it. And I just started getting those little, I don't know what the company is called. I think it's, it's in a red box, but they have those little individual packets. Child, you just heat up some water, put it in a cup and, and mix it up. You can have a couple of those a day. That whole packet has 16 in it for, for three to $5. What did I say about Alibaba? I'm looking at it now. I'm, I don't know, I'm kind of bullish on this. I really want to see. I want to see how it acts around this, this POC because you see every other time we were here, excuse me, last year we bounced off of that bullish. It was a little bearish, but then here, bullish, bullish. I don't know. So yeah, I hope you mark, mark that up for Alibaba. Um, uh, let's look at Starbucks. And then I think we'll wrap it up. <sighs> you said that's the name of a song. I want to. Oh, goodness. Hey, Coochie Boy. It's okay. Just the playback. You're not too late. We've talked about a lot though. Just make sure you watch the playback because now, oh my God, this is Starbucks. People are still paying for it. They're still buying it. Golly, but look, um, let's see. And this is on the daily chart. I mean, this really isn't giving me too much, but what I do like about it is it kind of has a pattern and I love trading patterns. Now this is on the daily chart. Okay, we've had the POC, that's the highest volume right here, has been trading around $106. Oops, well it moved, hold on. Okay, so the, the way this is over here, it moves based on the, the information that it has available, so oops. So if I have more information showing, it, it's showing that we definitely had some consolidation um, for almost a whole year around 107 and one. 14. Well, I didn't do anything in 2021 and then it dropped. 
And then around 2022, we had this move up. I, w I really would need to do some research to kind of see what did they change around this time or if this is just a seasonal pattern. But so for this, for me, Mm. I mean, this is interesting. We're literally right here at our value area high. It's around 113, 114. That's where we are. The RSI is so high. Honestly, if I wanted to follow this, this trend or this pattern, excuse me, I want to be bearish. But we'll just see. So, on, and that's kind of what I like. If, if I have a position and I'll say, okay, I think it's gonna be bearish or bullish. If it doesn't reach it, it doesn't reach it. I don't, it doesn't bother me. I just don't take the trade and I'll move on to something else. Cause usually one of the trades, if you, if you make, you know, a watch list with four or five trades, usually something is gonna pop off. So just go with the one that pops, don't stress. So for me, I'm gonna be bearish on Starbucks short term. And I can definitely see it probably come back, coming back because, you know, we have some resistance here around 108 to this 105. So I can kind of see a little pullback there. Um, even worse would be 96. I mean, if it crosses below 96, then whew, it could come back to this 80. So we'll see what happens. But I mean, this is definitely giving breakout. But the only reason why I'm not too excited about it is because the RSI is just a little bit too high for me. Now, if this is the opposite and you know, we had this breakout and the RSI was a little bit lower, I would be bullish. But with that RSI as crazy as it's around 70, messing around at 70, mm -mm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be bearish and I would wait for it to, um, let's move to the four. Ooh, yes. Honestly, I probably maybe have it around this 112. But yeah, if I was gonna have some levels, I would say 110 target, one, 108 target, and 103. So if you like to take target or excuse me, take profits and levels, you know, let's say if you get three contracts, get your contract, take your first, you know, boom, 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 and call it a day. Okay. You guys, I am really tired right now. So I, yeah, I'm gonna have to wrap it up. Okay. <sighs> okay. So that, that's pretty much it. Look at what happened Friday on SPY is going along. We talked, we talked about SPY. That's the first, that is the first, um, thing that we looked at. I still treat myself to Starbucks. I know that's right. Gap up on earnings. Okay. All right. Anyways. So you guys, that's pretty much it for today. If I'm going to leave you with anything, I would say, I don't know if you guys are into manifestation and all of that, but I would also want to recommend that you read this book. It's called The Power uh, by Rhonda Byrne. So I would say read that. Let me lower this. Get into that. And also, if you haven't, make sure that you get your Black Girl Stocks Candlestick Review Cards, okay? It's down in the link below. Or just go to www.theblackgirlstocks.com, okay? get your candlestick review cards. This is so much better than a book. Actually, it's not better, but if you just need some quick review, muscle memory, motor memory, get your deck. All right, you guys. So that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for joining our live. This has been amazing. Um, I look forward to having some more tutorial style videos coming, uh, in the upcoming week for uh, YouTube and yeah, so I'll see you guys later. Love you. Bye. Okay.